<laughs> on that on that note, you know, anybody who's interested, by the way, we've promoted recovering from religion here almost since. B b almost before it existed yeah. because you, you and I talked about this a little bit when you, you had the beginnings of the idea and you were actively starting working on, on this and the psychotherapy project right. and all the uh, hotline stuff. Um, but I remember way back in the past, uh, there was uh, Dr. Marlene Winnell. Right, yeah. Uh, you had had a conversation with her. I had a conversation with her. And then the, the three of us uh, talked, and I'm sure you guys talked about it. I don't want to insert myself in the narrative. I didn't do any work at all with regard to founding, recovering for religion, <laughs> or anything else. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time and saw this is a really amazing thing. And one of the, the things that Marlene kind of woke me up to was something she calls religious trauma syndrome. Right, right. Which, yeah. which while it's not in the DSM, it's right. you, you've talked about it before. Well, so. trauma is in the DSM. Right. PTSD is in the DSM. And what the DSM doesn't talk about is what what are the antecedents, what are the causes of right. trauma. And religion, well, we are, what, what Dr. Marlene Monell and, and others of us psychologists in the field are saying, religion contributes to trauma just like War contributes to trauma. Child abuse contributes to trauma. In fact, oftentimes they're all related. So let's not give a pass to religion. Religion is a major cause of trauma. And that's why we started, part of the reason we started recovering from religion, to give people a place to come and talk, discover what, you know, with the help they could get, and then uh, offer them that help, or at least give them channels to get that, that help. Religious trauma is a, an insidious thing for people that are, coming out of religion sometimes. I mean, at least in my observation at Recovering from Religion, we we talk to people all the time who say something like, I was beaten by my parents when they caught me masturbating. Or I was beaten by, by my parents because they I didn't learn my Bible lessons. And lots of child abuse. I mean, that's child abuse. But it's also religion. It, it's, if the parents didn't believe that crap, they wouldn't be beating their kids. And so the the trauma comes into them as adults, and they don't know what to do with it when they leave the church. Now, the yeah. problem is they beat their own kids. And now they turn around and say... I turned out all right. Yeah. No, so you I didn't. <laughs> You're still hitting people. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So we're... we're I, part of the reason I'm talking to you here today is I want to educate people that religion causes trauma. Now, if you were raised in some kind of a Episcopalian or Unitarian, you're probably not going to be traumatized. But I'll tell you, if you were raised in a Baptist church where they believed spare the rod, spoil the child, and you were beaten for not eating your peas, or you were beaten for not learning your Bible lessons, you may well be caught bringing trauma into your into your adulthood. And I, I, I can say, by the way, since I've talked about my parents before, I was never beaten for masturbating. I was never beaten for... I don't think I recall ever being beaten for not eating my food, and certainly not... Be I was, however, uh, beaten on occasion when I misbehaved, and for the longest time, I just accepted that that's the way it was. I don't suffer personally right. that I'm aware of any after effects from it, uh, but I'm vehemently opposed to it. I, I'm fucking tattoo, never hit a child, never hit anybody. Right, Why, right. We don't yeah. have to specify with a child. Don't hit, don't hit people. Uh, but for the people out there who might be religious who are like, Oh, here we go. These atheists are sitting here talking about religions causing trauma. Clearly, they don't have the first clue what they're talking about because religion is a force for good, and it's what holds the, the world together, and it's all about love, and it's all about this other stuff. Allow me to just calmly and politely suggest that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Because while you may not have, like, when I was spanked and I say I don't suffer anything from it, that doesn't mean that somebody else who was punished in the same way that I was doesn't suffer from that. The fact that religions can inspire people and make use of people to do good things or positive things doesn't mean that there's not also negative baggage there. And you're not the person who decides whether or not somebody else has been emotionally traumatized. Right, right, yeah. The fact of the matter is maybe, maybe your church is relatively fine. But... When, you, when your foundation is based on, oh, it's God's way or you're terrible, and when you talk about God's way, it is uh, an archaic notion that takes no advantage of what we've learned in the last couple thousand years with regard to interpersonal relationships, with regard to mental health. We need to stop yeah. putting a stigma on mental health issues, and the churches are, by and large, incredibly responsible for that stigma by saying that, oh, well, that's demon possession, or oh, you yeah, know, you've yeah, given crazy. over to sin, and God's given you over to reprobate mind and things like yeah. that. Your well, religion may not be the worst. Your religion may not even be all that bad. And if that's the case, 
then we're probably not talking about your religion. But we might be. And so taking a, a minute to think about how the things you've learned have affected you, what sort of baggage you carry around in your daily life, might make it a little easier to understand when we talk to people who say, I, I was treated this way because of religion. And please do us a favor. Don't call in to apologize on behalf of other people. Oh, I'm so sorry about the way you treated. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you, you have empathy and that you're not a shitty person, that you're not a jackass. Ten bucks. Uh, <laughs> but, sorry, it's an amusing side note in back in here. I appreciate the fact that, that you might not feel that way. But this isn't necessarily about how you feel. And there are people who've, who, who have been ostracized and their families have lost everything. Right, right. And what you've got with the Recovering from Religion Foundation is a helpline. Right, and um, a chat line. And you and yeah. I, I put up a video um, just yesterday. It'll be public to everybody tomorrow because I'm slightly... <laughs> this evening, I will go switch it either during the show or after the show. Uh, Daryl and I talked about all this, specifically about how people...